Welcome back to Banfield, Binging Jesus. That's really not something you're used to hearing, I'm sure, but yet it's an accurate description of what's going on with the new TV series that's called The Chosen. It's a show all about the life of Jesus Christ, and it is very, very popular. It's already racked up nearly 400 million views, which puts it up there with the darlings of streaming, like Breaking Bad, House of Cards, Game of Thrones, Tiger King. It's also critically acclaimed. It's currently coming in at 100% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, and that is a nearly impossible rating to get. Season one and season two are streaming now, and the third season of the show is also fully funded and set to begin production very soon. But there's a smear campaign against the show. Billboards like this are being defaced, and ads are running on social media telling people not to watch it. Are these crimes, heartless crimes, or is this a stroke of strategic genius? I am joined by Dallas Jenkins. He's the creator, director, and co-writer of The Chosen. He's also the mastermind behind the smear campaign. Okay, Dallas, so obviously to a lot of people this makes no sense, but I, I think it's crazy like a fox. What, uh, what's been the reaction so far to your campaign to smear your own show? I would say it's been a little mixed, to be honest with you, because our core fans, when they first saw those billboards, got really upset, and they were really defensive of the show so much so more than we even anticipated and they were actually calling billboard companies and going online to really uh, criticize the, pe the the dastardly people behind it and when we revealed that it was us uh, they were a little bit disappointed felt a little deceived so i had to do a little bit of uh, uh, sincere apologizing because i think we missed the boat with our core fans but the reaction from non-viewers from people who are just discovering the show because of the campaign has been actually extraordinary uh, i'm not the only mastermind behind it i'll be quite honest our distribution partner at angel studios and the ad company Harmon brothers did a brilliant job coming up with this with us and uh, we just thought it was a really unique disruptive way to bring attention to the show and point out some of the things that sometimes keep people from watching a show like this and talk about and spotlight what's different about this show and why it is something that you might want to check out. So we have, over the last week, uh, the view counts have skyrocketed. People have been saying, I wasn't going to watch the show. Now I am. I hadn't heard much about it. This is really clever. It makes me want to watch it. So it's been, it's been going really well overall. Well, you had a great deal of success with some folks on our show team because a Facebook ad uh, popped up and the producer was transfixed by it. And then I watched it and I was transfixed by it. So I want to show a piece of it to our audience. It's, it's, it's the devil teaching a class of wannabe devils how to be good devils and how they should just somehow figure out a way to stop everybody from watching this very popular show called The Chosen. Here's a piece. Take a look. Yo, El Diablo, how do we stop these people from watching it? Well, so far, my most successful strategy has been making people's moms recommend it to them. You should watch The Chosen, honey. Mm, it's your mom. <gasps> oh, Deborah, you could have made a great team. You must have been peeking into my house at some point to get that idea. But uh, So you said that some people were upset about the, um, the billboards, but the viewership you saw really spike when you put these campaigns out there and had inadvertent people saying, this looks really funny. This doesn't look like a preachy show. But is it a preachy show? No, and I think that's the thing about it. Well, the, the show isn't the ad. Obviously, the ad is a very, very different take and, and tone than what the show is. But in the ad, you see clips of the show. And the devil is saying, here's these clips. Let's try to convince everyone how bad the show is. And of course, the devil himself can't even stop but, but get teary watching the show. And some of the demons are even saying, wow, this looks really good. So uh, what we've been seeing is people seeing the ad and thinking, yeah, those clips are actually interesting. They're better than I expected. And there's so many people who, because it's a show about Jesus, it's a first century Galilee show, they're just going to assume either it's not going to be very good because it's a it's made by Christians, or if they're Christian, they might be concerned it's not going to be faithful to the Bible. And there's just so many reasons not to watch the show that we thought this ad could really spotlight and overcome a lot of those reasons. And so when you ask if the show is preachy, I mean, in the sense we see Jesus and we see his followers, but because we see Jesus through the eyes of those who actually met him, 
and you see their lives and you identify with their struggles and you identify with their pain and then hopefully identify with uh, what happens in their lives after they meet Jesus. It just doesn't feel like a message show or a documentary. It just feels like an organic piece of history, like any other show that you'd watch, like The Crown or some of the other shows you mentioned that, uh, that I love so much. And I think that's been the key to the show is it really makes these people feel like real human beings, which sometimes you don't really remember uh, when you see them in stained glass windows. Right. Well, that's the, that's been a lot of the um, reaction that I've been reading is that people feel like these are very real characters as opposed to characters who speak in a language that doesn't really feel, right. you know, relevant in, in today's life, but that these, these guys really do. I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about, you touched on it slightly, the green lighting of religious programming, because we were looking back at some of the history of the, the, the highest grossing biblical movies out there, and I'll throw up a list for you, Dallas. Ten Commandments comes in at a whopping $2 billion. One of my favorite movies of all time. I just love that movie. Ben-Hur, $611 million. That grossed. Um, the Passion of the Christ, $472 million. And then a movie called Noah at $359 million. And I thought, well, this just sounds like an automatic. If you just pitch a religious movie, you'll get greenlit. And that is not the case. So why is it? Yeah, we actually had to do it ourselves when, you know, and partnered with Angel Studios who had the idea of crowdfunding, which is something that I didn't think would work uh, because typically it doesn't work. But for us, when, when people started to see the short film that I'd done and hearing the vision for the show, uh, we ended up, as you mentioned earlier, shattering the all-time crowdfunding record with our first season generating over $10 million from 19,000 people around the world. The second season has generated tens of millions of dollars um, from people who, because the show is free. You can actually watch the show totally free, totally easy. You don't even need to give your credit card. You don't even need to give your email address. Uh, people, it's, but you know, people just choose to pay for it if they want to. The fact is, to your point, is yes, Bible stories have historically been massive successes. But what you see is in Hollywood, and I don't blame them for this. I'm not one of those who complains about it or demands that they do things my way, but because they don't really know that audience all that well, and you even mentioned in your intro, the show is extraordinarily popular and yet the viewer might not have heard about it because it doesn't reach popular culture uh, and mass popular culture. Hopefully these billboards and the campaign might change that, but I think that's some of the disconnect right now. And that's one of the problems with the way the country is, is we're very divided, very tribal. Back in, when those movies came out that you mentioned, uh, it was very common for everyone to want to go see a movie like The Ten Commandments. And what we're seeing is slowly but surely, audiences are starting to now do the same thing with The Chosen because it feels like a movie that they can appreciate and identify with. Well, it's super interesting. I want to just close with a really funny uh, moment from, from the show, just to sort of highlight that whole notion that these are very real people playing characters that you maybe didn't feel were so real before. So just have a quick look at this, uh, at this clip about the, the real characters. Take a look. If you look for him, you'll find him. That's not what I heard. Oh, yeah? What did you hear? I heard you looked and couldn't find him. You guys lost him for practically a whole day, Matthew said. Yeah. One of the rooms is haunted by my dead grandmother. Oh, I'll take that one. Do you know who he is? He's not afraid of ghosts. I might be. <laughs> Dallas Jenkins, it's really funny. I can't wait to get through uh, a couple more of the episodes. I appreciate you coming on. I'll just let our audience know you can watch The Chosen for free by downloading The Chosen app. Thanks so much, and good luck with your project. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, Ashley. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.